Don in London, hello. It's uh, June 6th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. I'm providing I remember that I'm powerless over alcohol on a daily basis and that life will get unmanageable if I take a drink. I have a chance for today to be a sober day. So, sober today, what's on my mind? Step 6 in the 12 step program is all about defects of character and can they be removed? Well, somebody was asking me yester yesterday, what would I do if I had a disruptive person in a meeting of the fellowship who was swearing like a trooper and offending, pe them, offending me and other people? What would I do? Well, I would have to ask myself, in their shoes, could I do anything else different? If I were in their shoes, is that the only vocabulary I have? If I'm in their shoes, am I fearful, angry, resentful? What's going on for me? So if I start to ask those questions, what's going on in their heads, rather than why am I judging them for the language they're using? Maybe I stand a chance of finding my own path in this, which is to understand other people have a, a different way of speaking. And maybe if I just listen to the message behind the words sometimes, rather than just the words they're using, I have a chance of understanding that person a little bit better and getting access to their experience, strength and hope. So sometimes we are vexed by other people and what they do. And they bring out the defects of character in me, which is fear of being, by being offended, uh, resentful because I don't like what they're saying, ego which says I'm judging them rather than humility to keep on learning to what is this person trying to express and why do they express it this way and can I hear a message of experience strength and hope from them and the answer is probably yes but would I want to put up with it every day the answer may be no so what do I do well I can only judge the situation on a daily basis and how it impacts on me so I wrote something for my Facebook page this morning. When I am disturbed, it is for a reason, and a very valid, and it's very valid to question why. When I am disturbed by people, places, and things, if I can see the situation through their eyes long enough to understand why, I may find a path and make choices which keep me safe and out of harm's way. And that relates to step six, not going backwards into my defects. Step one, saying I am powerless over people, places and things, and they are going to do what they're going to do, because they are. And step 11, which is prayer meditation, what's my part in this? And step 12, let people share as they wish, because I guess I could have done that too. And of course step 10, when I am disturbed, I am the one who is disturbed. So I need to look at what's disturbing me and not what is disturbing necessarily about the other person. Steps always about keeping my side of the street clean, try not to judge the other side of the street and not that's the trouble you see with the steps. They make us really good judges of what's going on elsewhere. So that's me. How do these steps work in practice for me? Daily steps. Steps for life, steps steps for living and keeping me out of trouble. As simple as that. So what follows? Daily reflections video uh, from different years and also step six the whole entire thing from the 12 and 12. Enough of me, more later. Hello, Don in London. Daily Reflections from the Daily Reflections book from AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, June 6th, D-Day in Europe. So for June 6th, all we do is try can he now take them all, every one? And that's talking about defects of character being removed. In doing step six, it helped me a lot to remember that I am striving for spiritual progress, spiritual in the now, progress in the now. Some of my character defects may be with me for the rest of my life. That's extremes of behavior, one way or another. But most of them have been, most have been turned down or eliminated all that step six asks me to do is to become willing to name my defects. And my main defects are fear, great facing and ego. Two extremes. Claim them as my own and be willing to discard the ones I can. Just for today. Because it is just for today. As I grow in the program, many of my defects become more objectionable to me than previously 
and therefore I need to repeat step six so that I can become happier with myself and maintain my serenity. So in other words, step six, every day, as life offers. John in London, hello. It's June 6th, 2009. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My substance, alcohol, my behaviour. Outlandish sometimes, suppressed most often probably by uh, taking a drink or two. So alcohol, my substance or addiction. And these days I just don't drink one day at a time. And what helps me more than anything is knowing where I am today. So over the last few years, possibly because I haven't drunk any alcohol or tried to take the edge off or tried to deny things, I get a better chance of just trying to be myself during the years of drinking simply because life was about making money, pleasing other people and looking right. So often I would wear a brave face or put on a brave face, uh, brave things, uh, work with my ego as my dominant part, if you like, rather than self-esteem or confidence and have a lot of fear behind it, fear of being found out for something I knew not what. And it's probably fear of finding out that I wasn't good enough to be here in the first place. So much to do with lack of confidence, lack of self-esteem and uh, little courage or faith. So <coughs> the, the Fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, has been uh, integral to my daily recovery. Family, community, friends, professionals professional medical people have been part of my story too and if it hadn't been for the intervention of professional medical people in sobriety I wouldn't have found out I had type 1 diabetes and then I would have died of malnutrition or something as horrible and I wouldn't have actually got properly diagnosed with clinical depression and at the moment the clinical depression is stable I'm in a phase where things are okay and uh, sometimes whatever the chemical imbalance and how it happens I haven't really discovered what causes it other than doing too much, too fast, too quickly. Uh, life can be okay. So we are, we are subject, I guess, to the vagaries of nature and providence. So like other people who don't have a, an addiction or a drinking problem or some behavioral aspects they need to work on, uh, we get to be as normal as we can be, whatever normal is, and be restored to sanity. So on a daily basis, I look for a bit more san sanity in me and then share my message of experience, strength, hope here on YouTube. And although I am part of the Fellowship of AA, I am not a spokesperson for it. So what AA does for me is simply this. It makes life possible a day at a time. Have somewhere to go and share my good times and my bad times and get a little, wis little wisdom from other people. So wisdom, experience, strength and hope is, is the name of the game. So uh, what have I learned over the last few years? I remain unique, authentic me. Well, I'm, I'm finding out who the unique, authentic me is. All those things are to the good. And as other people in the Fellowship of AA are unique and authentic, I cannot speak for them, nor would I wish to. We are all different, with one similarity only, and that's the ability to sink back into the addiction that we had before. So the Fellowship is there to keep us on uh, a, a better path of living, our own unique path of living. There are 720 meetings of AA in London, UK, every week. So I'm told. I've never counted them, but I go to quite a few. And at the beginning, beginning of each meeting, we share a preamble which gives new people the understanding of why we're there. And uh, people who have been around a little while, like me, a reinforcement of why we are still part of the fellowship. Now, some people leave because it suits them and they've got other means which keeps them in the recovery. Some people leave to go back to drinking because it's just too awful to see reality as it is and some people just don't think it's their cup of tea and that's all good because as long as they're finding their unique and authentic selves and finding out how to be sober and live life well that's what I hope for them anyway that's my that's my hope I cannot I cannot lead another person into recovery a person gets into recovery because they have a desire for it and this is what the preamble says at every meeting Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. 
The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So, yeah, I go to meetings of AA, they help me uh, understand my, my condition today. How life is working for me, or maybe life isn't working for me. How to deal with the good times and the bad times, and the sorrowful times too, where we can be sad for whatever has occurred in that day, and deal with it as best we can. So it's about avoiding denial, if you can do that. Yeah, I wonder if you can. I'm, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, dealing with n denial, dealing with uh, our fear, dealing with not having to put a great face on, and not utilising our ego to uh, feel better about ourselves. So the whole program, if you like, is about courage, faith and confidence, learning wisdom to face the, the reality of today. And for me, the spiritual part is seeing reality as it is. And as been said by others, you know, the, what is spiritual is the ability to cope with life as it is and make the best of it. And that spiritual connection is about truth. So when God is mentioned in the program of AA, how do I react to it these days? Well, I don't react in anger. I react or respond understanding that if there is a God, it's based on truth and it's also based on love and it's based on being a part of, included in the whole of living. So <clears throat> where do I get my wisdom from? Uh, often people say God speaks through people and that's their wisdom or their lack of it. So we learn as we go. So God is truth, God is love, God is working through people. And that's what Gandhi suggested. Who knows? All we need to have is an understanding that we're not God. And then we've got a, ch a good chance that we won't try and do things in isolation and a good chance that we will be included back into family, society, community, whatever it is that we feel is right for us, based on uh, a wider and broader view than my own. So if I, if I thought my world is my world and I'm the only one in charge, I suspect I would, would be back drinking because I would be completely isolated and trying to do it without the help or being connected to other people. So. I've said a lot already, <coughs> and time flies, doesn't it? Daily reflections, every day a reading. And we're in the sixth, sixth month, and in the sixth month it's about the sixth step in this daily reflections. And uh, the sixth step is about understanding our defects or areas of development of character. My defects are very clear to me. They are fear, brave facing, and ego, and wanting to deal with the shortcomings, not enough faith, not enough confidence, and not enough courage. So, for June 6, it says here, all we do is try. Can he now take them all, every one? And that's talking about defects in God. In doing step six, it helped me a lot to remember that I am striving for spiritual progress. And for me, spiritual is being able to see reality. Some of my character defects may be with me for the rest of my life, but most have been toned down or eliminated. All that step six asks of me is to become willing to name my defects claim them as my own and be willing to discard the ones I can. Just for today, that is. And as I grow in the program, many of my de defects become more objectionable to me than previously and therefore I need to repeat step six so I, that I can become happier with myself and ma maintain my serenity. So what is it about attitude and behaviour? We can go forwards and we can go backwards or we can stay in the day. But the difficulty is that fear, brave facing and ego will always be utilised when we get a nasty shock or somebody upsets us and we don't want to actually listen to what they have to say. But it's better to listen to it, absorb it and say, in response to what you say, there is probably some truth in it. And if there is some truth in it, I can do something about it. What I can't do is live in ignorance. And, you know, for those who say, I'll never change. and. Uh, Ignorance is bliss. It's not. It's a way of defeating and defying the truth of our, ourselves. So for me now, I prefer courage, faith and confidence. Accepting that I am not everybody's cup of tea. 
and accepting that I need change gradually and get a bit more serenity just on a daily basis just making simple progress so as I say at the end of these videos the serenity prayer exhortation to God good conscience or your higher power or just an understanding of I need to be doing this grant me grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference again always just for a day my clock so I don't overrun and uh, my last day with Teddy the parrot I feel as the owner is back hopefully last night or nearly as this morning and it's been an interesting 10 or 12 days with Ted and uh, looking after somebody else's animal or bird is uh, a responsibility and uh, we get to be concerned about them and uh, I've just woken him up he sleeps with a sheet over his cage and then when you take it off he sort of looks at you quizzically as if to say is it really daylight time and are you going to look after me all day long and uh, it's quite nice actually to be trusted in different ways by different people and we all have a responsibility not only trusting being trusting of others and how to trust ourselves in the right circumstances and I guess as we go through the uh, steps 12 steps of AA steps of change we learn a lot around the middle parts and the steps of six and seven which some would like to eradicate and make it a ten step program I find are absolutely essential to me on a daily basis and step six is all about defects of character or liabilities and step seven is all about our assets and it's all about attitude and behavior changes so when I do the daily readings it does refer to how it was how it is today and how it might be in the future and these steps of six and seven the defects and shortcomings as they're called defects is probably doing too much of the wrong thing and shortcomings is not doing enough of the right thing they're very important because it is that that way we stop reacting to life in the old behavior and start re responding to life in the new behavior and behind that is the attitude that life is better now we stop drinking and we can start to trust ourselves and other people again and also to do just enough judging around the situation and the environment that we we are careful with the people we meet and make part of our lives and at the moment I'm in love and the person I'm in, lo I'm in love with I trust completely completely in the sense that we are together in this journey and we don't know where we're going but it sure is good right now and the gift is we don't have to try and work it out beyond one day and I feel that's probably the way most people live their lives and get on well and grow in wisdom and love and that's what it's all about I mean love is it all you need is love said the Beatles back in 1967 and uh, I remember it and I felt it in my heart and at the same time I felt all the fears of life as well so we learn as we go and uh, this is all about AA I just do the AA preamble so you know where I'm coming from. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any, any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is, is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And I went to a meeting last night and it was about Tradition 5, and Tradition 5 says, as it says here, each group has but one primary purpose, to carry its message to the alcoholic who still suffers. And in the Book of Words, the 12 by 12 traditions and uh, steps, Tradition 5 talks about an Irishman who's lying in bed having gone, gone through, uh, going through a detox and being made very ill by alcohol and he gets to get a visit from somebody from AA and how they got there I do not know but one of the most important things which it tells me is when I was lying in a hospital bed and people came to see me, even a priest, for last rites I wanted to push them away and uh, I told the priest where to go in no uncertain manner and he said don't be so fussy so we learn our lessons as we go. Today, June 6th, 
Daily Reflections, written for AA people by AA people, and it says here, all we do is try. Can, can he now take them all, everyone, and that's referring to the defects, and restore us to a better way of living? In doing step six, it helped me a lot to remember that I am striving for spiritual progress. Some of my character defects may be with me for the rest of my life, but most have been toned, toned down or eliminated. All that step six asks of me is to become willing to make my defects, is willing to name my defects, claim them as my own, and be willing to discard the ones I can, just for today. As I grow in the program, many of my defects become more objectionable to me than previously, and therefore I need to repeat step six so that I can become happier with myself and maintain my serenity. And you know, serenity is the gift of the spiritual life, which is to live in the moment with less filters and less denials, and it would take millions of years for us all to get to be perfect. And serenity, serenity comes in the action and the progress we make, not in attaining perfection. It's about being able to make progress each day, just gently and gradually. And that's where a lot of us get it wrong, and we feel we're not perfect, we're, we're, we're impaired in some way. And the answer is, we're not impaired. These defects of character also come into play when the, when the chips are down. And, uh, you know, if life was perfect, and people were perfect, and civilization, civilization were perfect, goodness knows how boring that would be, because we just maybe flop about doing nothing. I don't think that is the case, but what, what I'm saying is, you know, life is as nature and providence intended, or as it, it is. The purpose of life is to make it good, as good as we can. Not at the expense of anybody else, and certainly not from ego, fear, and brave facing. And those are the defects that uh, manifest in me most often. So, going on to as Bill sees it, these are not in any particular order except as they appear in the book. So, page 162, let's keep it simple. We need to dis distinguish sharply between spiritual and spir spiritual simplicity and functional simplicity. When we say that AA advocates no theological proposition except God as we understand Him, we greatly simplify AA life by avoiding conflicts and exclusiveness. Because actually, for me, your version of God is as good as mine, and I don't know what mine is yet, except that there is a power greater than me. And it goes on to say, but when we get into questions of action by groups, by areas and by AA as a whole, we find that we must, to some extent, organise to carry the message, or else, or else face chaos. And chaos, chaos is not simplicity. And it goes on to say, I learned that temporary or seeming good can often be the deadly en enemy of the permanent best. When it comes to survival for AA, nothing short of our very best will be good enough. I feel that's uh, let, letting, get, keep, letting us keep it simple means that we simply understand what we come to believe. And it's not for us to try and impose our view on anybody else or my view on you, which is called proselytizing. And I was speaking to my girlfriend about it last night and we had a good laugh. And she liked my Life with Teddy spiritual progress video. Well, it made her laugh. That was the whole point. And, uh, you know, recovery is not about being serious, it's not being a Puritan. It's not going around with a black, a black outfit and a white collar. It's about seeing the colour of life. Now, where am I? Just enough time, I think, also, to talk about 24-hour day book, which is very useful, pocket size, not, not endorsed by AA, but it is written by somebody who is or has been in AA, AA probably dead now. June 6th. Drinking is the way we alcoholics express our maladjustments to life. I believe that I was a potential alcoholic from the start. I had an inferiority complex. I didn't make friends easily. There was a will between. There was a wall between me and other people, and I was lonely. I was not well adjusted to life. Did I drink to escape from myself? I I did, and that could have been written by me, because although I often appear appeared confident inside, I was putting on a brave face, so the ex external world could see just how frightened I was. Um, my way of coping with stress or not coping with stress was to drink and uh, drink in moderation is a, a good useful device or a medication to take the edge off life when the life is either fun or sad it, it takes our extremes away and the problem, is with, the problem is with extremes if you go too far like anything we can, can become dependent on either substance or behavior and I had the great good fortune to uh, 
be with I, I had a, a, an assessment with the psychiatrist yesterday and it turned out to be two psychiatrists and I will be referred for another another appointment on something else which I may share in the future to do with physicality but the point is they saw in me potential to help other people and uh, they know a bit about what I do but they also realize I have a brittle part to me and I need to make that more solid and that's what the steps and AA does a day at a time Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment. Find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship, that fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about. 12 Steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the 12 Traditions in Fellowship, Unity, Service and Recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble, which is on this little card, which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do, to include people around being sober one day at a time, and living a spiritual life, knowing what our feelings are, and not drinking. So what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. But there are some principles involved, and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June, for me, is all about step six. So I share the step. And also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six, it says here, we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? It probably boils down to the in the biblical sense the seven deadly seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet you'll find many a version and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly right so pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God it has been called the sin from which all others arise pride is also known as vanity so pride is the first deadly sin 
or defect. Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than, more than that which one requires. Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. And the contrary virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem, an epic poem written by Prudentius, circa 410 AD, an epic poem written. Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins. Humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed, and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, we all have some sort of traits around those issues. And the twelve steps of the fellowship try to address this in, in the way I understand it, in step six and step seven. So step six is all about my defects of character, and step seven is all about my shortcomings. So my defects of character are the sins, and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues, short on virtue. But in there somewhere is modern life, and life as it is today, and the changing values of society. But around that is a personal code. So these 12 steps, principles, these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living. And how we do that is entirely up to us. No one's going to stop us doing it another way. And if they were trying to stop us, our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way. We get stubborn and defiant often, or I did. So, step six in the fellowship program reads as this, with a bit of commentary from me. And don't forget, this is just a personal understanding. It's your understanding in the end which counts. And where do you get your personal understanding? from life and also listening to the many voices in society and probably in the fellowship of AA if you stick around long enough. So we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. This is the step that separates the men from the boys or the women from the girls. So de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends. He goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six yes he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his, his faults without any reservations whatever has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator and again, don't get hung up on Creator. It's the God of your understanding, or a power greater than you, which counts in this. The common good often is used or utilised. Of course, the often disputed question of whether God can and will, under certain, certain conditions, remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member. To him, this proposition will be no theory at all. It will be just about the largest fact in his life. He will usually offer his proof in a statement like this. Sure, I was beaten, absolutely licked. My own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol. Change of scene, the best efforts of family, friends, doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism. I simply couldn't stop drinking, and no human being could seem to do the job for me. But when I became willing to clean house, that's step four 
and then as to a higher power God as I understand him to give me release my obsessions to drink vanished he was lifted right out of me well it didn't quite work that way because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time but when I got to fellowship I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self will will run riot and willpower will fail and it was right so I listened to the many voices if God works through people the wisdom came quick and easy for me so I stuck around for quite a while shivering with, with fear another one of my defects until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people and then I started to learn in AA meetings all over the world statements just like this are heard daily it is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession so in a very complete and literal way all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives and God has proceeded to do exactly that and I would add to that as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking then my defects of character seem to diminish personality traits don't go away completely they just don't but if we ask on a daily basis at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects when men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives they commit a most unnatural act defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation they seem bent upon self-destruction they work against their, best, their own deepest instinct as they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession and uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning and as it says humility kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience liber liberality and diligence so working on sober rather than working on the next drink here their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life for nature and God alike abhor suicide but most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all every normal person wants for example to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society in the society of his fellows and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things indeed God made him that way he did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive it is nowhere evidence evident at least in this life that our creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives indeed that would be foolish to think that so far as we know it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives indeed that would be unnatural since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose and that's to do with our thinking and, and our vices I guess when they drive us blindly or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth or as nature intended that is the measure of our character defects or if you wish our sins if we ask God will certainly forgive all our derelictions but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation that is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves he asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character so indeed it is about building of character and if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behaviour can be in that addiction too as many have found 
So step six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character, is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job. In other words, to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect. Because if we try to be perfect from day one, we would fail. We would, we would be back on pride and self-will. The key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn. How many of us have this degree of readiness? In an absolute sense, practically nobody has it. The best we can do, with all honesty that, can, that we can summon, is to try to have it. Even then, the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point, a point at which we say, no, I can't give this up yet. And we shall often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry, this I will never give up. Such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves. No matter how far we have progressed, desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God, or, as some say, nature and providence, as we've got to where we are in our nature, and providence, that is, as the world is today. Some who feel they have done but well may dispute this, so let's try to think about it a little further. Practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps. No one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart, nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief. No one wants to be angry enough to murder, lustful enough to rape, gluttonous enough to ruin his health. No one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy, or to be paralysed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock-bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves. Yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway. But when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life. However it turns out to be. What we must recognise now is that we exult in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow? Or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say, so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds? And even while staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us, for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger, and I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path, if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly, I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip barred with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. And uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, 
Am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it. Even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it because I don't know what is right for you. Now, if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction. Else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not, rather than working for it, or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have, instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it? And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call it only we call that retiring. Consider too our talents for pr procrastination, which is really sloth in five syllables. Nearly anyone can make a good list of the of such defects as these, and few of us would be se would seriously think of giving them up, at least until they cause us excessive misery. And without a doubt, if we go hell for leather in one direction, thinking we're right, and we wonder why nobody's following us, we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up. But if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right, or that my way or the highway is the right way, then we are alone again and isolated. And we, we may not drink, but we're certainly not as sober as we could be. Some people, of course, may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them, but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according, of course, to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission, we were powerless over alcohol, can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals. But, you know, strict adherence on a daily basis, life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways. So, defects, as well as virtues, will be around. There are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress. Seen in this light, step six is still difficult but not at all impossible. The only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying. And that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. We are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol, we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk. The only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other 
excessive excessive outlook of personality trait are we ready and the only answer is yes really or if you if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry the answer may be no so we keep on trying looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say this i cannot give up yet but we should not say to ourselves that i will never give up Let's dispose of what happen, appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned. That word in the mind of a rationalising alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning. He could say, how very easy, sure, I'll head towards perfection, but I'm certainly not going to hurry. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course, this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation. At the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. A well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked, or we provoke others. The moment we say no never, our minds close against the grace of God, or common sense. After all, what else would God's word be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous, and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us as nature intended nature and providence all these wonderful words I like because you know spiritual is now spiritual is in the moment it's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now and either we accept life on life's terms acceptance is the key always or we get into trouble again and it's being defiant or angry against our situation often that life isn't giving us what we think we deserve so just a reminder the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings the virtues which is all about step seven i don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation i can have a step six day full of defects of character if i'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. And I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past. I was criticised deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect it's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out my defect would be not to say it if you get my drift so these are my views and understandings of step, step six and seven so how does it work for me on a daily basis well in the morning I say how am I feeling why and what can I do and if I feel okay given my current situation my feelings fit my, my experience right now then life is understandable and comprehensible I can, I can get on with it but if my feelings don't fit my current reality 
my feelings are over the top in some way in a particular direction of those defects or sins or my virtues are without foundation courage, faith and confidence over elated I need to, to ask myself why am I feeling this way and that's not to actually analyse to death how am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now why? because I'm giving it, I'm giving it a second thought what can I do? consider my options today or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent and I think that sums it up cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent and the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step 6 June step 7 July I can have a bit of both in each day I can have a, a fairly bad start or a fairly good start enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear very facing an ego in my heart it's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today